I invite you to stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. They took off. They took off, but she stayed. She stayed in the, in the empty darkness, heart broken into a thousand pieces. She was alone, uh, abandoned even. Just, just when it seemed like things couldn't get any Worse, couldn't get any bleaker than they were on Friday when, when, he was, when he was crucified, executed on a cross. Now she couldn't even pay her respects and tend to his body. It was gone, vanished, taken away uh, along with her hope. And then we hear this. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the, where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not... Hold on to me. And and now why would Jesus go and tell her that? Why would Jesus tell her not to let go of him? I imagine that when Jesus called her by name, Mary ran to him and and, and wrapped him up in a big bear hug as her mind raced about just what she was seeing and and what it meant that, that Jesus was there and was alive. And then Jesus says, do not hold on to me? you got to be kidding me, Jesus. Don't hold on, Mary says. How about No. It makes perfect sense that that Mary grabs a hold of Jesus. She'd already lost him once. She couldn't risk losing him again. She can be certain of this if she just holds on. Yet Jesus persists. Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God. And your God. Now, Jesus telling Mary to, to go is not a heartless demand. No, it's a gracious invitation to trust in Him. Yes, Jesus will ascend, but just as importantly, He invites Mary Magdalene to be the person God made her to be. That is, the very first preacher of the resurrection. 
Jesus lets Mary know that he trusts her to go and proclaim the earth-shaking, death-defeating news of Easter to the other disciples. So he invites her to let go in order to experience and share the fullness of God. And Mary does just that. We hear in John 20, verse 18, Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And to do this, Mary had to let go of Jesus. And she also had to, had to let go of her fears that the other disciples would not believe her. She had to, had to let go of her worries that her voice would be ignored in the midst of a highly patriarchal society. She had to let go of the certainty of holding on to Jesus. But letting go, woof. I remember the first day of kindergarten for our firstborn, Hannah. That morning, all of the, all the students and parents were invited into the classroom together to begin the day, and those, those wide-eyed kindergartners, they, they found their cubbies and their spots to sit around their tables. They looked so little in that big room. Parents and children were, were nervous and excited and anxious. And then Ms. Fisher, the, the teacher, invited us all to gather around for story time. And she proceeded to read the, the beautiful and, and terrible book, The Kissing Hand. Any of you familiar with The Kissing Hand? It, it, it's a lovely book. And it's awful to hear on the first day of kindergarten. <laughs> After the story, the, the teacher said it was time for the parents to go. So my wife Karen and I had to, had to put on our brave faces and, and say goodbye to Hannah. All the, all the children were, were, were clutching their parents and parents were, were hugging them. And, and I recall Karen saying, honey, it's, it, it's okay. Honey, you, you can let go. Everything's going to be all right. Honey, it, it's, it's time to let go. Joel, let go. <laughs> so we had to let go. We had to entrust our precious daughter to her teacher, and to this, to this new school. We had to let go because it's what Hannah needed in order to, to grow up and develop and, and socialize. That's what so much of, of growing up is about. It's what parenting, it's what adulting is about. Letting go. And what we hear this Easter, as we, as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ with the, with the triumphant hymns and the boisterous brass, the angelic anthems, the, the swelling crowds, the beautiful flowers, what we hear is that a life of faith in Jesus Christ is a life of letting go. Each and every one of us here today has has something that we need to let go of. Maybe for you it means letting go of, of your fears and worries. Or maybe for you it means letting go of your anger and annoyance. Maybe for you, at least today, it means letting go of the desire to zoom right out of the parking lot after worship. Maybe for you it means letting go of trying to be a, a perfect person, or at least letting go of the person you pretend to be on social media. I mean, no one posts a mediocre hair day on Instagram. 
No one pins a bland meal on Pinterest. No one tweets about the drudgery of filling out TPS reports. This Easter, the risen Jesus meets you in whatever struggle you're going through. And just as he did with Mary, Jesus calls you by name. Jesus surrounds you with the embrace of God's love, and then the resurrected Jesus invites you to just let go. Let go and let God. You see, the good news of Easter is that, you know, we don't have to take ourselves so seriously. Note to self. We don't have to be perfect in order to receive God's love and the the fullness of life. You see, Jesus did not endure the cross to maintain the status quo. Jesus did not break the bonds of death for us to be held captive. Jesus did not shake free the grave clothes to leave things business as usual. No, Jesus is risen to transform our lives. When you let go, God empowers you to act and look and live different than the world around you. You will shine forth with the light of Christ. You will experience a freedom unlike anything you have ever known. And yes, it's it's a risk, just as it was a risk for, for Mary Magdalene to let go of Jesus, and just like it's a risk whenever we let go of a child heading to kindergarten. But letting go is a risk worth taking because a life of faith in Jesus Christ is the greatest adventure and most fulfilling life you could ever lead. It's a life where you are freed from sin and death, a life where you can embrace the gifts God has given you, a life where you can be who God created you to be for the sake of the world. So follow Mary Magdalene who let go of Jesus in order to proclaim the resurrection And follow Jesus, who let go of everything in order to give the world life. This Easter, you can trust that the cross and resurrection are for you. This Easter, you can take the risk to let go and let God. This Easter... You can trust that as you let go, Jesus will never, never let go of you. Amen.